Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another live broadcast here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Tonight we'll feature Tumball and the Waller Bulldogs. We'll give you live broadcast coverage right here. A special night on tonight, Cancer Night, here at the complex of Waller. We want to take us a break to play the national anthem. We'll come back with today's starting lineup. We've been telling people how quick and easy it is to apply for Medicare online, even if you're not ready to apply for retirement benefits. But the best advocates are the people out there who are using the application. Filing for Medicare online was simple, and I couldn't believe what little time it took to complete. Filing online took less than five minutes from start to finish. I am stunned and amazed at how quick and easy this really was. Find out just how easy it is. Visit www.socialsecurity.gov slash Medicare only. You may be done with your application before the next song is over. That's www.socialsecurity.gov slash Medicare only. Every year, millions of teens work to earn extra money and learn important skills. But certain jobs can jeopardize your health or well-being. So know the rules. First, the hours you can work. If you're 14 or 15, you can only work for three hours on a school day and for eight hours on a non-school day. Also, if you're 14 or 15, you may not work before 7 a.m. or after 7 p.m., except from June 1st through Labor Day, when you can work later, up to 9 p.m. Next, and really important, hazardous jobs. If you're under 18, jobs such as roofing, operating dangerous equipment, and most driving jobs are off limits. So work safe. For more information, call the U.S. Department of Labor's toll-free helpline at 1-866-4-US-WAGE or visit youthrules.dol.gov. A message from the U.S. Department of Labor. What are your status updates today? You're learning a new language? Going all organic? Instead of typing your feelings, what if you could put them into action? by creating a network to help keep kids off the street in a country like Armenia or in Honduras, bringing IT into the classroom or on a farm in Tanzania, helping stem the world's food crisis by creating a sustainable agricultural program. What if every ounce of your being helped update the status of a person and in turn they did the same for you? Could this be enough social interaction? It's only the beginning of something larger. Life is calling. How far will you go? Peace Corps. Get interactive at peacecorps.gov slash game. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we get ready for tonight's contest between the Tumball Cougars and the Walla Bulldogs. As they're lined up, they got teams ready for the starting Lineups and the national anthem to be played here momentarily. Tumball coming in tonight's contest with a one and one conference record. They are twelve and five overall. Bulldogs coming in with a five, six and one record, zero and two in conference play. So these teams will be getting ready to lock horns here momentarily as we will give you tonight's broadcast. Uh, we got the National Anthem lightly being played right now. We'll take us another quick break, and when we come back, we'll be ready for tonight's first pitch. In the last 30 years, childhood obesity in America has tripled. Today, one in three kids is already overweight or obese. This is registered dietitian Melissa Joy Dobbins for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Good nutrition is key to fighting childhood obesity. These tips can help your child stay healthy. Recruit them to the kitchen. Preparing meals teaches kids about healthy foods like lean proteins, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and low-fat dairy. Make sure to get 60 minutes of physical activity every day. Make it a family activity. And avoid sugary or caffeinated beverages. Give kids water, low-fat milk, and 100% fruit juices. To keep your whole family healthy, be a registered dietitian and visit www.eatright.org. Encouraging you to eat right, I'm registered dietitian Melissa Joy Dobbins with the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. 
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. As we get ready for tonight's contest, we will quickly go over our batting orders for the Tumball Memorial, I mean, Tumball Cougars. You have leading off number four. Number four will be Eric Oaks. Number two will be Case Ryan. Number three hitter, number six, one number six will be Zach Hanosa. He'll be catching tonight. Number 34 will be Mr. Brandon Marshall. He'll be at first base. Number 26 will be Mr. Scott Herman. Herman. And then we have number nine will be Mr. Mark Bowman. Number five will be Mr. Andrew Skyviton. And number 13 will be Ethan Kern. And number 20 will be Mr. Jacob Jenkins batting in the ninth spot. Tonight's pitcher for the Cougars will be number three. Number three will be Mr. Noah Meyer. Bulldogs in their home white uniforms as they get ready for tonight. The Cougars will be in their road red with the black pinstripe white pants on. As they get ready for today's contest, the ball is just about tossed down. We'll give you defensive lineups for the Bulldogs here momentarily as we get things set up. For the Bulldogs, in left field will be Fisher. Center field will be Corbin. And Marches will be in right field. Lazy at third. Vines at shortstop. Prince at second base. You have Bowman. I mean, uh, not Bowman. Barlett at first. Guigley will be on the mound. I mean, behind the plate. And you have Mr. Cody Morgan who will be leading the charge on the mound. So coming up now for the Cougars here to get this first pitch on the way off will be Oates. Oates wearing number four, batting from the right-hand side as we are moments away from the first pitch. Sean still shining, a little overshadow coming from home plate toward the mound, and the first pitch offered up by Morgan is going to be hit up the middle, and that will be a leadoff single for the Bulldog, I mean, for the uh, Cougars, I'm sorry. I got a little tied up here. So leadoff single for Oaks will bring up Ryan now, as Ryan will come back in from the right-hand side. Morgan's a left-handed pitcher. He sets up, fires. That ball is down for ball one. One and zero is the count. Just getting started here at Walla High School. Bulldogs come in with an 0-2 record in conference play. The Cougars are one and one. Both teams have lost to Magnolia. That ball is going to be hit foul out of play, and we got an even count. It's one ball and one strike. One and one is the count. Just getting started here at Walla. Guys are coming off a of spring break, so they. Spring break days are over with. They're ready to go ahead and get things back in the swing of things. We're getting back into the swing of things. Morgan now with the 1-1 pitch. Dave Bunt was laid down, or attempted to be laid down, but misses downstairs. Two balls and one strike. Two and one is the count. One hit so far for the Cougars. Bulldogs looking to try to roll two right now. Morgan sets in with Guy Green. Double play depth. For the Bulldogs, there's a ball hit towards second base. That's the four six, and not in time for the three. Prince was able to get the vines, and that will go four six on the put out for Oaks, and it'll be a fielder's choice for Ryan. So it will now bring up the catcher number six, Minnesota. Minnesota batting from the right hand side. You got one out here. In the top half of the first inning, no score. Bulldogs and the Cougars doing district battle right now. Bulldogs come off a defeat. That ball is going to be hit to the right, left side. It's going to be just foul. Diving was lazy. It's going to be strike one. Got one out here. Runner at first base will now be Ryan. He trade places with Oaks. So now we're coming in. Ready to get things loaded up. A new ball for the catcher guy to get out to Morgan. Ready to get things lined up. Morgan steps 
onto the rubber. As he gets ready to face off against Hinosa, the pitch off it up. That's down in the dirt. Good stop by the catcher. One ball, one strike. One and one is the count. No score. Here in this first inning of play. Morgan sets now. High kick, delivers. There's another ball hit up the middle. Diving was fine. Not able to get a hold to that. That's going to be another base hit. Runners now at first and second. With one out. Going to bring up for the Cougars, first baseman, number 34, 34 being Marshall, Brandon Marshall. Marshall coming in, batting from the left-hand side. Runners at first and second. Two hits so far for the Cougars here in this inning. Only one out. Okay, we got a softball game going on right behind us here on the diamond. There's a ball hit, popped up toward the left side. Running back is lazy over the shoulder. Not able to make that grab. It's going to be strike one. One strike off it up. Oh, and one is the count. No scores just yet. We got runners at first and second. First runner, Oaks, reached by a base hit. He was out on the lead 4 6 3 double play attempt. Ryan reached on the field of choice. Then Hanosa came in and got the base hit right back up the middle. That's where we're standing right now. But the lefty on lefty battle will continue. The pitch offered up. Breaking ball just missed. One ball and one strike. Dr. Mike Hunt here with you from the Open Mike Broadcast Network. Serving the community through faith and athletics since 2002. Pitch offered up by Morgan. There's a swing and a miss. We got one and two offered up now. As Morgan coming off here to a pretty decent start. Morgan zeroes in with Geigel. Runners at first and second. Sets, kicks, fires. There's a ball swung on and hit. Toward left center and making the grab with ease will be the center fielder, Mr. Fulton, to make that out number two. And that will bring up now Mr. Herman. Herman wears number 26. Scott Herman, he's also batting from the left hand side. We've got two outs now. Runners at first and second. There's a ball hit sharply to center field. And that's going to bring in a run as that was the third hit of the inning. First run. And that will be a base hit for Herman and an RBI single. That's going to bring in Ryan. So Bowman will now come to the plate. Bowman batting from the right-hand side. One run has come across so far here in this first inning. The pitch off it up. That ball fouled back out of play in strike one. Oh, and one is the count. Yes, getting on the way. One nothing is the score. Tom Ball has scored so far. The pitch. That one just misses. One ball and one strike. We got one and one count. Morgan. Ball hit towards the left side, and that's going to be another base hit, a play at the plate. And got him. What a play by Fisher. To get the out, that will actually go 7-2. It will be credited for another base hit, but it will take care of the Cougars. The Cougars end up with one run off of three hits and one runner left on base. We are going to the bottom of the first inning, Tomball 1, the Bulldogs 0. 
We've been telling people how quick and easy it is to apply for Medicare online, even if you're not ready to apply for retirement benefits. But the best advocates are the people out there who are using the application. Filing for Medicare online was simple, and I couldn't believe what little time it took to complete. Filing online took less than five minutes from start to finish. I am stunned and amazed at how quick and easy this really was. Find out just how easy it is. Visit www.socialsecurity.gov slash Medicare only. You may be done with your application before the next song is over. That's www.socialsecurity.gov slash Medicare only. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back as we get to the bottom half of the first inning. Bulldogs gave up one run in that bottom half for the first inning. Leading off for the Bulldogs will be Lazy, Vines, Bartlett, Skygley, Fulton, Marches, Fisher, Prince, and Milky will be the designated hitter. Defensively for the Cougars, you have Jenkins in left field. You have in center field will be Herman. In right field will be Bowman at third base. Be Stuyvesant. Shortstop will be Ryan. Second base will be Oaks. First base will be Marshall. And the catcher is Hanosa. And on the mound will be Noah Meyer. As we get ready to start the second inning, Andre Davis has joined us here. Good to see him in the mix here. Coming by, we got the toss down to second base. Those that keep up with the Open Mic Broadcast Network know we keep up with the Prairie View and University Panthers. They won game one earlier today by the score of 8-7. to seven. Had to win that at the final at bat of the eighth inning. Lazy will now come to the plate for the Bulldogs. He'll be batting from the right-hand side. As we may mention, the Bulldogs in their home white uniforms with Cougars in their red tops, white bottom, black pinstripe pants, ready to go to work here. So Meyer checks in with Hinosa. It's ready to make his first pitch. That ball is going to be fouled off to the right side for strike one. Oh, and one is the count. One zero is our score here in the bottom half of the first inning, scheduled for seven here on the high school level. The old one pitch from Meyer. There's a ball hit toward the left side. Shortstop grabs it and makes a fine. 6-3, throw out to take care of Mr. Lazy. So brings up the shortstop, Corbin Vine. Lines wears number three, batting from the right-hand side. Those may remember Corbin Vine from the hardwood. The shooting guard for Coach Claiborne, Earl Claiborne. The pitch offered up will be a strike call. 0-1 is the count. 1-0 is our score just getting on the way here in this bottom half of the first inning. Another strike is called. 0-2 now to Vine. That's a ball. One ball, one strike to Corbin Vine. Meyer, ready to go back to work. Positions himself onto the rubber, gets his signal, kicks and fires. There's a ball fouled off to the right side. It will hold it one ball and two strikes. One and two is our count. One zero is our score here in the bottom half of the first inning. Lazy was the first batter. He grounded out to shortstop. Those that are keeping score, that would go 6-3 on the put out. That's a 1-2 pitch now offered up by Meyer. There was a ball hit toward the right side. Oak sits down on it at second base. Tosses it over for the 4-3 put out to retire Vines. So we got two quick outs here. As it brings up now, first baseman, Cage Bartlett. Bartlett batting from the right-hand side as well. Does bring a little bit of pop to the table. 
Uh, Coach Carl is coming up here with the, with the sloppy Joe sandwiches or whatever it is, chopped beef sandwiches. The pitch off it up for Meyer, breaking ball, misses for ball one. We got two outs here in the bottom of the first inning. No hits so far for the Bulldogs. And we have a total of four hits for the Cougars. There is a strike that gets across. One one is to count two outs here in the bottom half of the first inning. Meyer checks in with her nose his catcher. Now he sets fires. There's a ball hit toward the right side, and it will go out of play. One ball and two strikes. One and two is the count. One zero is our score here in the bottom half of the first inning. Bulldogs looking for their first district win of the season. They are five, six, and one on the record on the season overall. And there's a strike three call to retire. The side here for the Bulldogs and going down will be looking will be Bartlett. There were no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We're going to the top of the second. Bulldogs trail one zero. You listen to the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Every year, millions of teens work to earn extra money and learn important skills. But certain jobs can jeopardize your health or well-being. So know the rules. First, the hours you can work. If you're 14 or 15, you can only work for three hours on a school day and for eight hours on a non-school day. Also, if you're 14 or 15, you may not work before 7 a.m. or after 7 p.m., except from June 1st through Labor Day, when you can work later, up to 9 p.m. Next, and really important, hazardous jobs. If you're under 18, jobs such as roofing, operating dangerous equipment, and most driving jobs are off-limits. So work safe. For more information, call the U.S. Department of Labor's toll-free helpline at 1-866-4-US-WAGE or visit youthrules.dol.gov. A message from the U.S. Department of Labor. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. they got the river dance being played right now as we go into the top half of the second inning on top of the Bulldogs by the score of 1-0. Leading off will be Mr. Stuyvesant, third baseman, Givington, and then you have Curum and Jenkins, and then you're back to the top of the lineup. 1-0 is our score. Four hits for the Cougars, none for the Bulldogs as of yet. Or getting ready to go back to work for a second inning. He delivers a ball, 1-0. Is the count. One ball, no strikes. Here in the top half of the second inning, Cougars ended up getting one run off of four hits. No errors and a runner left on base as a strike was called in that first inning of work. Now, Stiverton will be leading things off here in the second. There's a ball downstairs. Two and one is the count. Morgan. The left-handed pitcher has a pretty good breaking ball and a so-so fastball as he kicks with the 2-1, and that one misses. Three balls and one strike. Three and one's the count to the leadoff man, Skyverson, who's playing third base for Coach Doug Rush. Doug Rush put in his bid to be the head coach at Prairie View, but to Norvell as Antoine Riggins won that job, and there is a base on ball to lead this inning off, and it's going to be now the designated hitter, Ethan Harrell. Harrell batting from the right-hand side. Lights are on now as we get this dusk-to-dawn look in the evening time here on the campus of Walla. Bulldogs looking for their first district win as the pitch is down and the dirt gets past the catcher for ball one. The runner will advance to second base. 1-0 and is the count now. Here in the top half of the second inning. Defensively, you got Guy catching, Lazy at third base, Vines at shortstop, Prince at second base, you have Bartlett at first base, Fisher in left field, Fulton in center field, and Marches in right field. On the mound is Cody Morgan. Delivers a strike, one ball, one strike. Here's the count. 
here in the top half of the second inning. Just getting on the way. Scheduled for seven. Now the pitch is going to be hit up the middle. 6-3 put out for nine. Good job of work. The runner will advance to third base, however. And it's going to bring up Jacob Jenkins. Jenkins first at bat. So we've got one out here in this top half of the second inning. Got Jenkins in the top of the lineup for the Cougars. Boyd is going to try to see if he can keep the runner at bay at third base as he misses with a ball, breaking ball in the dirt. Good stop by the catcher, guy. We want to know what's the count. Want to know what's the count? 1 0 is our score. Cougars got one run off of four hits in the first inning. Got a runner at second base now. Got on, I mean, third base. We got on with a walk. There's a ball. 2 0 is the count. On deck will be the leadoff man, second baseman, Oaks. Morgan. Trying to work himself out the little jam here. The runner going squeeze play. It's going to be a butter chip foul and got him at the plate. Reaching for the bunt. It was a ball pitch. Good job by Morgan to throw that ball out of the strike zone. And that will be actually a two unassisted on the still of the bunt camp. It looks like it's a stolen attempt home, so we'll go one two on the putout. That was a strike on the bunt attempt by Jenkins, so now it goes to two balls and one strike. Two and one is the count. As that one will miss, three balls and one strike. A big break by the Bulldogs on that one right there to stop a potential addition of runs for the Cougars. Morgan ready to go with the 3-1 count. There's a ball going to be hit right up the middle. And that will be a base hit. And just like that, that would have been a run scored. And you add another hit for the Cougars. Five hits for the Cougars in one and a half innings. So it brings up the leadoff man, Oaks. Oaks was able to reach on with a single and got put out on the 4-6-3 double play attempt. Oregon now trying to go back to work. He sets, fires, has a strike call. 0-1 is the count. 1-0 is our score here in the top half of the second inning. Oregon checking the runner over at first, now delivering. There's a ball tap, foul, out of play, and it's quickly 0-2. Off it up to the leadoff man, Oates. Cougars come in with a one and one district record on this evening. They are twelve and five overall. Both of these teams lost to Magnolia. Tomball lost three to two. Waller lost four to three. Ah, and that one just hits the batter. That's going to be a free pass for Oaks. So now we'll bring up Ryan. Runners will go now be at first and second. This one is bring up shortstop Ryan. Ryan got on with the field of choice with the 4 6 3 double play attempt. Boy, you didn't want to see that one get away. You had two strikes on the batter and missed the, missed the breaking ball. And now he'll start all over. And he gets the first pitch over for strike one to Ryan. Ryan scored the run in the first inning for the Cougars. 1 0 is our score here in the top half of the second inning. Two outs. That one's fouled back out of play. And it's now 0-2 again with Morgan way out in front right now. Morgan gets a new ball. Gively gets position, ready to receive the 0-2 pitch. Morgan checks the runners at first and second. Now he delivers. That one misses outside. One ball and two strikes. The night lights are on, not completely dark just yet. We ain't blowing out toward right field. It's always blowing out toward right field here at Walla. 320 down the line, 380 in center field. That one's outside. Two balls and two strikes. Two and two is the count. Three-two is the count. Two outs, runners 
at first and second. Morgan Check fires. That ball is fouled back out of play, and we'll hold it to a two. Bulldog baseball right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Hard to believe we've been doing this as long as we've been doing it. Since 2002, hadn't got tired yet. Morgan now set, ready to go with the 2-2 delivery. Yes, and that is a called strike to Lyon. And down go the Cougars here in the top half of the second inning. No runs were scored. The Cougars end up getting a total of one hit in that inning and one walk. One, no runs, one hit, no errors, and two runners left on base. We are going to the top or the bottom of the second inning. Cougars up, 1-0. What are your status updates today? You're learning a new language? Going all organic? Instead of typing your feelings, what if you could put them into action? By creating a network to help keep kids off the streets in a country like Armenia or in Honduras, bringing IT into the classroom or on a farm in Tanzania, helping stem the world's food crisis by creating a sustainable agricultural program. What if every ounce of your being helped update the status of a person, and in turn, they did the same for you? Could this be enough social interaction? Or is this only the beginning of something larger? Life is calling. How far will you go? Peace Corps. Get interactive at peacecorps.gov slash game. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We get ready to start this bottom half of the second inning. Bulldogs trailing the Cougars by the score of 1-0. West Bagley is scheduled to lead off. He will be followed by Mr. Fulton, Mr. Cole Fulton, and after him will be Mr. Marches, Corey Marches. So, Bagley... The old linebacker playing catcher. Be leading off for the Bulldogs here in the bottom half of the second inning against Mr. Meyer. First pitch is a ball. One and one's a count. No hits for the Bulldogs just yet. We get into this bottom half of the second inning. Went up, three up, three down in the top half of the first. A ground the short, ground the second, and a strikeout looking in the first inning. That is a strike off it up. One ball, one strike is the count. We are in the bottom half of the second inning here. There's another ball taken by Geigley. And it is now two and one in favor of the Bulldog catcher. Eric Geigley. The pitch offered up from Meyer. The ball, three and one. So Blue just stood up that time. He didn't say anything. Most times, if he's going to call a strike, he'll bark something that you know that it is a strike. So the 3-1 delivery by Meyer is going to be a foul tip, and that will make it all full count now to the Bulldogs catcher. West guy. I call him Eric Guy. His father is Eric Guy. That's the best guy. Right? The payoff pitch from Meyer is a ball four. And that is going to be a free pass for Godley. So Cole Pulpin will come to the plate now. Pulpin, first at bat. We've got a designated runner for the catcher to help speed the game up. Try to see who that was. We didn't see the number of who that was coming for. Let me see if we can check it out a little bit. Meanwhile, Fulton will come to the plate. We'll try to get to the runner here momentarily. One nothing. Come ball on top. Bulldogs trying to keep. They check the runner over at first base and back in time. No problem. So Meyer pitching from the stretch now with the runner at first base. 
pitch and a butt pushed toward. Oh, good job by the catcher, Hanosa, to catch that for the out. Hanosa catches the punt off the net. So it would be just a strike then. We, we thought, he thought, it was a, thought it was a catch for a second here, but it was filed back. There's another bunt attempt, and this one is going to go one three on the put out that will take care of full field. The runner will advance to second base, and it's going to bring up the right fielder. So that will go one three. The pitcher being number one, catcher's number two, and your third baseman's number three. Second baseman's number four. Third baseman's number five, and your shot stop number six. It's going to bring up. The right fielder, Mr. Marches, for the Bulldogs. We've got one out here in the bottom half of the second inning. Bulldogs still looking for that first hit. Runner got on by a walk. Meyer now ready to check the runner at second base, and everybody's back in time. Meyer now set, delivers. There's a ball hit. Toward the right side, and that will go 4 3. The runner will advance to third base, and it's going to bring up the left fielder, Curtis Fisher. Curtis Fisher got a strong put out from left field, throwing the run out at the plate. The 7 2 put out. As we now have two outs here in this bottom half of the second inning. Fisher swings and misses for strike one. One one is the count. Runner 90 feet away. This is Guigley, who is on. He has a pinch runner. Has the ball in the dirt. Good stop by the catcher, Hanosa. Make it go 0 oh, and 1 and 1 is the count. Finally got a glance at the number there. For the Bulldogs, number eight is the runner, Mr. Skyler White. So one and one is the count from Meyer offered up. That's the ball upstairs, two and one. On deck to Fisher, it will be Prince, Philip Prince. Two and one is the count. Runner at third base is representing the tie run. There's a ball hit toward the Right side, and that is going to retire the Bulldogs. Bulldogs not able to get anything. No runs off of no hits, no errors, and a runner left on base. We're going to the top of the third. The Bulldogs trail 1 0. You're listening to the Open Mic Broadcast Network. In the last 30 years, childhood obesity in America has tripled. Today, one in three kids is already overweight or obese. This is registered dietitian Melissa Joy Dobbins for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Good nutrition is key to fighting childhood obesity. These tips can help your child stay healthy. Recruit them to the kitchen. Preparing meals teaches kids about healthy foods like lean proteins, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and low-fat dairy. Make sure to get 60 minutes of physical activity every day. Make it a family activity. And avoid sugary or caffeinated beverages. Give kids water, low-fat milk, and 100% fruit juices. To keep your whole family healthy, see a registered dietitian and visit www.eatright.org. Encouraging you to eat right, I'm registered dietitian Melissa Joy Dobbins with the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Mike Prince is with you going to the top of third inning. Some ball on top of wall about a score of 1-0. Leading off here in this top half for the third inning will be Hanosa the catcher, Marshall, and then Herman. So Mr. Morgan, ready to go to his third inning of work here. He's given up five hits off of one run. Hanosa is last at bat. Ended up with a single. He got thrown out at the plate. So the pitch offered up by Morgan. It was right call. 
0-1 is the count. 1-0 is our score here in this top of the third inning. There's a ball. I'm stuck for a second there. I was trying to check a monitor out. 1-1 one one is the count. 1-0 is our score. More than going right back to work. There's the ball hit toward center. And that will be out number one center fielder. Open was able to take care of that one. And he's going to bring up Brandon Marshall. Marshall with his first at bat flying out to Mr. Fulpin in center field. His first pitch is going to be hit to the left side. And that will be another out, 6-3. Actually, he got through. It's going to be another base hit. That's a six hit for the Cougars. So Herman will come to the plate now. Another lefty on lefty battle. Morgan now trying to go to work. First pitch. Breaking ball. Misses. 1-0 and is the count. One and the count, one out here in the top of the third inning, one nothing. Cougars on top of the Bulldogs. Morgan checks the runner over at first to pitch off it up. There's a ball tap foul toward the right side, and we're even at one ball and one strike. One ball, one strike, one out, six hits for the Cougars. They got four of those hits in the first inning, one so far in this inning. Morgan ready to go back to work with the 1-1 count. He sets fire. Breaking ball misses. 2-1 and one is the count. 2-1 is the count. Morgan working against Marshall. Left-handed first base, left-handed hitting first baseman. There's a breaking ball. That one misses. So now Morgan finds himself in a hole, 3-1 and one, with one out. See if O'Rush calls a little motion with his guy at first base right now. Perfect hit and run situation. Runner does not go, and that's ball four. So Morgan gives up a single and walks the second batter he faces. And it's going to bring up Mr. Herman. Runners at first and second, one out. Oh, I said Herman Bonin. Herman just got the walk. Bonin's down up the bit. Bonin, batting from the right hand side, is one toward the right side, up, and making the grab will be Fulton in center field for out number two. As he will now. Have two outs with Stevenson coming to the plate. Runners at first and second, two outs. Morgan trying to work himself out of another jam. Stevenson checking at third base, trying to see if anything will be called on here. Morgan being as patient. Yeah, we've been taking a few dry cuts outside the box, and we've got some type of delay going on right now. But now the middle umpire gets himself repositioned, and I guess we're ready to get back to work now. So Morgan back on the mound, everything in the batter's box. The lefty-righty battle with Morgan delivering. That's the ball outside. 1-0 is the count, 1-0 is our score. Runners at first and second with two outs here in the top of the third inning. Six hits for the Cougars, one run, no errors. There's the ball hit for the left side. And a great grab by outfielder Fisher 
to retire the Cougars here in the top half of the third inning. The Cougars get no runs off of one hit, no errors, and two runners left on base. We completed two and a half. Bulldogs Trail 1-0. You're listening to the Open Mic Broadcast Network. If you could do one thing to make an impact on the things that matter to your family, your community, and your country, wouldn't you do it? That's what voting is all about, an easy way to make a difference. Register, learn about their issues, and candidates and vote this November. Your vote helps shape the future of America. Visit www.vote411.org to get started. This is a public purpose announcement from Open My Broadcast Network. Your education, your health care, your community, your future. Your vote counts for many things. Take control. Get registered. Get educated. Get out and vote. Learn more at www.vote411.org. This is a public service announcement from Open Mic Broadcast Network. The Waller Bulldog Club is a proud supporter for the Waller community. The Waller Independent School District, Pee Wee Football, Little League Baseball, FFA, 4-H, BAM, Cheerleaders, and Waller Athletics. The Waller Bulldog Club is all about the community. Showing support for the youth of Waller County, the Waller Bulldog Club. Hey, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. As we get ready to start this bottom half of the third inning. Dr. Mike Prince here with you at the Open Mike Broadcast Network. Leading off for the Bulldogs will be second baseman Philip Prince, who will be followed by designated hitter Eric Milky. He will be back to the top of the lineup with Brandon Levy. Prince coming in, batting from the right hand side, wearing number 11 as he gets ready to face off against Mr. Meyer. First pitch will be down low for ball one. Prince steps back into the box at the second down at third base. Meyer, ready to go to work. The pitch is a strike call. One ball and one strike. One and one is the count. One zero is our score. As Meyer gets ready to deliver, France calls time out. Time out. Time out. <laughs> he calls time out. <laughs> So Meyer now pitching from the windup. We'll get ready to face off against Prince, who's leading off for the Bulldogs here in the third inning. There's a late swing by Prince. Kind of had a hitch in that swing, and it's now one and two. One and two is the count to Philip Prince. Meyer ready to go back to work. Prince swings and misses on a strikeout. Swung at one way outside the strike zone. He goes down. For the first out, second strikeout for Meyer. That a designated hitter will be Eric Milky. Milky, batting from the right hand side. Takes strike one. Oh, and one is the count to the designated hitter, Eric Milky. There's a ball foul straight back. And it is quickly 0-2 here in the third inning. Bulldogs trail 1-0. Meyer goes back to work. Meyer sets in, checks with his catcher, Hanosa. There's almost a check swing, and they're going to be able to hold back, does Milky. The count goes to one ball, two strikes. One and two is that count. Bottom half of the third inning. No hits for the Bulldogs as of yet. That one misses downstairs. Two balls, two strikes. On deck will be the leadoff, Randon Lazy. Third baseman for the Bulldogs. There's a ball fouled back out of play. The count will hold at two balls and two strikes. Two and two is a count, one out. Here in this bottom half of the third inning. The 2-2 two, two pitch off it up. As another ball pops straight back, Canosa has no room. That will go out of play. Count will hold it two balls and two strikes. 
Two and two is the count. One zero is a score in the bottom half of the third inning. Just hitting the midway point of this game. As high school scheduled for seven innings. The two two pitch coming. There's a swing and a miss, and down goes Milky. Back to back strikeouts for the pitcher, Mr. Noah Meyer, here in the third inning. It brings up the third baseman, Randon Lazy. Lazy grounded out the shortstop. His last at that. Coming up to some old school run DMC. Tricky. The pitch from Meyer, breaking ball, calls strike to Lazy. Bulldogs trailing 1-0 here. Still looking for the first hit here in the third inning. The 0-1 pitch from Meyer. There's a ball hit toward the left side. It's going to be foul territory down third base side. So it will be 0-2 offered up to the Bulldog third baseman, Randon Lazy. Lazy is the nephew of the coach, Rodney Lazy. Get a new set of balls in. Lavy now steps back into the box, ready to face to Maya. Maya sets, fires. There's a ball, poke, foul, stand alive. Here's Lavy. The count will hold it 0-2. No balls, two strikes, two outs here in the bottom half of the third inning. No runs, no hits, no errors for the Bulldogs. One run, six hits, no errors for the Cougars. 0-2 delivery being offered up by Meyer to Levy. That ball is hit toward the right side, right over a dive or jumping oak. And that will be the first hit for the Bulldogs here in the third inning. Levy gets the two-strike single, and it will now bring up Corbin Fine. Fine rounded to second base, his first at bat. Coming up to the old Johnny Cash. Runner at first base with a two-out single is Lazy. And it's a ball offered up to Mr. Corbin Vine. I feel Vine get a gap shot somewhere. The 1-0 pitch being offered up by Meyer. There's a ball hit toward the right side. And making the kick will be Bowman to retire the Bulldogs here in the bottom half of the third inning. That with no runs off of one hit, no errors, and a runner left on base. We're going to the top of the fourth. Bulldogs trail 1 0. You're listening to the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Childhood obesity is an epidemic in the U.S., however, breastfeeding from birth can help prevent childhood obesity. Obese kids are more likely to become obese adults who suffer from chronic diseases such as diabetes and heart disease. Every month a baby is breastfed, the chance of becoming overweight goes down, but a third of moms stop breastfeeding without hospital support. With nearly 500 babies born in U.S. hospitals every hour, hospitals play a vital role in helping a new mom start and continue breastfeeding. Yet about 95% of hospitals lack policies that fully support breastfeeding. There are 10 steps hospitals can take to support breastfeeding moms. These include making sure moms have time to learn how to breastfeed, are able to breastfeed as often as their baby needs, and that they know where to get help when they go home. Learn more about how hospitals can support breastfeeding moms at www.cdc.gov slash vital signs. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Mike Prince here with you from the Open Mic Broadcast Network, live from Walla High School. Mike Baseball here on a Tuesday evening. As we have leading off, Ethan Carroll, designated hitter for the Cougars. He grounded out the shortstop, his last at bat. Bulldogs finally got that one hit back in the third, third yeah, bottom half of the third inning now. As Carroll will come up against Morgan here in the top of the fourth. And there's a strike call. 0-1 is the count. 
Old one is the count. One zero is our score. A tough baseball district here in this district twenty. There's another strike call by Morgan. Morgan quickly out in front of Carroll, 0 and 2. Bulldog playing straight away up the middle. Mines and Prince up the middle. You have Levy and Marshall. I mean Bartlett on the corners. There's a dirt ball. One ball, two strikes. One and two is the count here in the top of the fourth inning. We'll get a score update for the women's softball game here in a moment. As the pitch is going to be offered up from Morgan. Breaking ball downstairs. Two balls. Two strikes. Two and two is the count. Morgan ready to face off now. Ooh, that one misses. Full count. Full count. As Morgan gets ready to make the playoff pitch, and he loses the batter. Loses the batter off of a walk to start this fourth inning off, and it's going to bring up now Mr. Jenkins, left fielder, Jacob Jenkins. Jenkins got a single. His first at bat. Morgan will now come. There's a ball hit toward the right side. Wow. <laughs> you go and figure that one out. A little groundworm base hit. Thought it was going to go foul. He ends up being hit number seven for the Cougars in the second hit for Jenkins. Now he will bring up I actually said it went foul, so it was a strike. There's the ball hit sharply, and that gets through the shortstop. So we got another base hit. Put some ball up the middle. That is hit number eight for the Cougars. Runners at first and second. There's a ball tap, and the pitcher Morgan with a save safe. Wow, everybody saved. So now we got we got bases loaded now. As the backup, the ball got away. So we got somebody out of order here from the way they're calling the lineup now. We'll try to get that straightened out here in just a second. That ball gets away from the catcher and coming in scoring will be a run for some ball. Here in the top of the fourth inning. Somehow we got something out of whack here. Jenkins got a hit. As we, we do know that it is 2-0 now. Cougars on top of the Bulldogs. Morgan ready to go to work. They have a strike call. One ball and one strike. Yeah, one out. That one misses. Two balls and one strike. The two one pitch, that ball is fouled back out of play. We're all even at two and two. Is that the legendary Mr. Bird? 
How you doing, sir? Two and two is the count. One out. Two nothing is our score here. Morgan gets a new ball. Now they're walking things around. Ready to go back to work now is Morgan. The pitch. Does the ball hit towards the right side? That is going to drive in another run. We have runners at the corner. Another run will come in to score. So the runners score. As it looks like we're going to have a meeting on the mound. We're going to take us a quick break here. It looks like we're going to have us a pitching change for the Bulldogs. We'll try to get some things caught up, get you back to speed on what we got going on. You're listening to Bulldog Baseball right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. There's always a moment, the moment you decide to get involved, to get engaged. This is my American story. When you teach someone to read, they have a, a sense of, self-fulfillment. Seeing family, friends fall victims of gang violence, drugs, it definitely made me want to serve. There was a hole in the ground, and by the time we left, there was a house. I realized that these kids were not getting a meal. It is so easy to give back. I don't have a lot of money to help people, but I do have something. I have time. You can give any skill you have. I see a great need in my community. Imagine how strong a society we could be. This is Barack Obama. Every one of us has a role to play in making our communities and our country stronger. Discover yours. Help us continue to make a difference in the life of our nation. Go to serve.gov. Find the opportunity that works for you. This message is brought to you by the Corporation for National Community Service. Usher, I use my music, talent, and friends to power change. I spent years mentoring youth and have seen how volunteering and service teaches young people the skills they need to become leaders and sets them on the path to success. This is about you. It's about your power. It's about creating change on your terms by volunteering. The truth is you can do anything. You can read with kids, clean up a park, organize a clothing drive, become a mentor, or support veterans and military families. Just find something that moves you and do it. Go to serve.gov and join me in answering the president's call to service. The needs we face are great, but together we can be the solution. Find your power to serve. Give it more and go to serve.gov today. This message is brought to you by United We Serve and the Corporation for National and Community Service. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we have a new picture in fact, Mr. Derek Plata has come in to pitch in relief for Cody Morgan. We had a runner just attempt to steal second base as we now have Marshall, the first baseman, with a 2 and 0 count. We got runners at second and third now. 3 nothing is our score. Two runs have come across for the Cougars here in this fourth inning. So Plata, the pitcher, as he misses, 3-0 and now is the count. 3-0 is our score here in the top of the fourth inning. Bata came in and did Yeoman's work against Magnolia Bulldogs in his debut as he misses on that one and walks the runner, or the batter. We now have a bases loaded situation here in the fourth inning. Base is loaded, and Scott Herman will now come to the plate. Herman walked and singled, so he's one for one on the day. Hits one sharply towards second base for the 4-6. Three, there we go, 4-6-3. Press the vines, vines over the Bartlett to retire the Cougars in that 4-6-3. However... There were two runs to come across for the Cougars in that inning off of a total of one, two, two, three, four, five, six, 
two hits, no errors, and one runner left on base. We are going to the bottom of the fourth. Cougars on top by the score of three to zero. My name is Carmelita Lima, and this is my American story. I actually did three years of AmeriCorps, and during that time I was able to work for Habitat for Humanity. When I showed up on the site, there was a hole in the ground, and by the time we left, there was a house, and a woman could sweep her floor for the first time, and she just started crying, and we all hugged her, and it was just a moment that is burned in my memory. I encourage everybody to serve because it's just something that will bring light to your life. I don't know how else to explain it. It's a way of connecting to the world and giving back and showing love to people that you don't even know. Every one of us has a role to play in making our communities and our country stronger. Discover yours. Help us continue to make a difference in the life of our nation. Go to serve.gov and find the opportunity that works for you. This message is brought to you by the Corporation for National and Community Service. And welcome back as we start this bottom half of the fourth inning. Bulldogs trailing 3-0. Bartlett will be leading off for the Bulldogs. It will be Bartlett, Geigley, and Pulpin to start this bottom half of the fourth inning off for the Bulldogs. New pitcher for the Bulldogs. Same pitcher for the Cougars as Iyer gets ready. He delivers ball one. To start this bottom half of the fourth inning. Eight hits for the Cougars, three runs, no errors. One hit for the Bulldogs. Going to work now is Meyer. That ball's outside. 2 and 0. Oh. <laughs> 2. 2 and 0 oh is the count. Meyer's 2 0 oh delivery. That ball is turned on. And down the line, and it's going to be a double attempt and in safely with the leadoff double here in the bottom half of the fourth inning is Bartlett. Bartlett turned on that one to get a good look. Second hit for the Bulldogs, as now coming up will be Dively. Dively coming up, he has turning power as well as he'll step in. With the Bulldogs trailing by the score of 3 nothing here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. You always want to get that leadoff man on. And a good job by Bartlett. Now they got to string some hits together. Trying to make everything go to pass here. Dagley stepping in. Runner at second base. Nobody out. Bottom half of the fourth inning. Meyer delivers. There's a ball hit toward the right side. Get out of play. Yeah. Dive is down. Will pop short to right field. So it's going to bring up Cole Pulpin. Pulpin will come. Pulpin is 0 for 1. He hit a little tap us back to the pitcher. Second inning. Need a base hit now to get some things evened out here for the Bulldogs. Meyer checks in with a nose for the catcher, delivers, and there's a strike call. 0-1 is the count. 3-0 is our score here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. One run in the first for the Cougars, two runs in the fourth for the Cougars. Bulldogs trying to counter. Eight hits for the Cougars, as it is two hits for the Bulldogs. Meyer. Checking in with Hinosa's catcher. Now decides to come through. That ball is going to be hit toward the left side. And everybody, oh, they got the runner cut up in a rundown. And that is going to go 6 4 5 3 5 to get the runner at second. Uh, how you uh, feel the choice for Pulpin? That's going to go six, four, five, four, five. So it's going to bring up marches now. We got two outs here in the 
bottom of the fourth. Didn't need that to happen. Advancing to second off the rundown would be the batter as that ball goes into the deck. Four pin will be at second base. One and zero is the count. Bulldogs being their own worst enemy right about now. Going back towards second base, and Pulpin will be back in time. 3 nothing is our score here in this bottom half of the fourth inning. Higher checks in. Fires. That's the ball. 2 and was a count. Two balls, no strikes. Two outs, runner at second base. Here in the fourth inning. Bulldogs trying to jump into that run column. Trailing 3 nothing here with two outs. Ready to go back to work. Will be Meyer checking the runner pull in at second base. That was a foul straight back as Marches was on top of that one. Two and one is the count. That will come in at you in 3D. <laughs> well, now Marches steps out, comes back into the box right now. Meyer ready to go to work. Two and one is the count. Meyer checks the runner, delivers. There's a ball, poke foul down left field side. It's going to be two and two on deck. Marches gets on, will be the left field of Fisher. Bulldogs got to put some hits together here. They only have two hits to count for on the evening. Fire fires. Breaking ball. Misses. Good stop by Hinosa. The runner trying to advance. And he's going to be free. Advancing was pulling off the ball in the dirt. Three balls, two strikes to count. Payoff pitch about to be offered up to Marches from Meyer. Meyer checks in. Now he's set, ready to fire. Now Marches asks for timeout, and he's granted the timeout as he steps outside the box. Takes a few dry cuts. Get ready to resume action. The payoff pitch in route. Swung on and missed. Marches goes down on strikes. And that is going to retire the Bulldogs in the fifth inning. Bulldogs end up with no runs off of one hit. No errors. One runner left on base. We're going to the bottom or the top of the fifth inning. Bulldogs trail 3 0. You're listening to the open mic. Broadcast. Thank you for joining us on today's broadcast. Go, Caleb! Come on, hit a homer, Jesse! Go, guys! Hey, did you guys know that kids who play sports earn more money when they grow up? <sighs> of course. I, I knew that. Hey, did you guys know that kids who read books have a bigger vocabulary? Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Wow, <laughs> Did you guys know that friendly children have more friends? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's true. I knew that. Did you guys know that winter babies are better at music? Everyone knows that. Oh, yeah? yeah. Pretty obvious. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Obvious. Oh, hey, guys, did you know that most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Huh. I didn't know that. I'm pretty sure I knew that. I'm pretty sure you did. Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right car seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to the top half of the fifth inning. Cougars up 3-0. Bowman will be leading off here in this fifth inning. He'll be followed by Skyverton and then Turn. Plata in for relief for Morgan as he gets the first pitch over for strike one.
0-1 is the count. Pitch off it up. Downstairs. One ball, one strike. Blocker comes in, working from the windup. Ready to go. Fires. There's a ball hit. Forks left center. That's going to be another hit for the Cougars. Givington will now come to the plate. Givington for the evening fly to left, walk, and score the run. He'll come in ready to face against Flata for the first time. Flata, Flata, there's a hit and run, poking and knocking that away. Good job of hitting that time to keep the battle alive and hopes alive for the runner. It is 0-1, offered up to the batter. Giving. Giving him batting from the left hand side, wearing number five. Blotter ready to go back to work. Slide steps. That ball's outside. One ball, one strike. Nobody out here in the top half of the fifth inning. Cougars up by the score of 3 0. Dr. Mike Prince here with you from the Open Mike Broadcast Network. Giving you live baseball coverage for the Wall of Bulldogs. Pitch showing bunt. That ball smacked foul toward the left side, and we have a one ball, two strike count to the batter, Skevington. Bulldogs got two hits. Got close to threatening the last inning. Were not able to put some hits together. Get that run across. Cougars, meanwhile, they called a balk, and a runner did advance a second. So now we got a runner at second base here. As that breaking ball is going to hit the corner for a strike. And they took that pitch away. So they run a ball. So now we have one ball and two strikes. So that pitch never did count. So now it is one, two. That one misses outside. Two balls and two strikes. Two and two is a count. Nobody out. Runner at second base here in the top of the fifth inning. Cougars on top by the score of 3 0. Plata checks the runner at second base, fly steps. That ball is going to be poked foul to the left side, and the count will hold at two balls and two strikes. Night baseball as the sky is completely black right now. The night lights are on, and there's not a more pretty thing to look at than night baseball. Plata checks. Fires. There's a ball turned on hard at second base. Prince sits on that to get the 4-3 put out. The runner will advance to third base. Turned on that pretty good, did Mr. Stuyvesant. So Ethan Kern will now come to the plate. Kern walked and scored back in the fourth inning and grounded the shortstop in the second inning. So a runner at third base. We got one out. Bulldogs trying to stop the bleeding. There's a check swing. They're going to appeal. And let's see. Did not go. 1 0 is the count. 1 0 is the count. 3 0 is our score. Jared Plotter in relief for Corey or Cody Morgan. There's a ball. Foul back. Got an even count. One ball and one strike. At third base is Mr. Herman, I mean Bowman. Don't want him coming in if you're the Bulldog faithful. Coming back now, set. Ready to go is pitch inside. That's going to be ball two. Two balls, one strike, one out, top of the fifth inning. Three nothing is our score. Thumb ball on top of Waller. Bonta ready to go back to work. Diagonally gives the signal. Text run at third. Delivers. There's a ball. Hit. Toward the right side. He's going to catch the play at the plate. And oh, she's strong. As the right field and marches over through that one. So that will end up being a sacrifice for. 
Mr. Karam, another run will come in for number 26, the Cougars. So it's going to bring up Jenkins now. We'll be two outs. Jenkins will come in. He tapped back to the pitcher. That's what threw me off last time here in his last at bat. Tapped back to the pitcher. He will come in now ready to face Plata for the first time. There's the ball hit up the middle off Plata's glove. And that will be a base hit. That is the 10th hit for the Cougars. So Oaks will now come to the plate. Oaks scored after getting a single back in the fourth inning. Bonta now ready to go back to work. Runner at first base. Checks the run over back in time. No count. Two outs here in this top half of the fifth inning. Lata comes set, fires. There's the ball hit sharply towards second baseman. Plants will flip that over for the 4-6, and that will take care of the Bulldogs. I'm sorry, the Cougars. That's going to be a fielder's choice for him to retire. However, the Cougars add another run off of, there was one run off a total of two hits, no errors, and one runner left on the base pads. We're going to the bottom of the fifth. Cougars on top by the score of four to zero. You're listening to Baseball Action right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Another proud supporter for the Open Mic Broadcast Network and the Waller County Broadcast coverage is the City of Prairie View for the Economic Group. The City of Prairie View encourages you to show support for their local businesses. The Star of Texas Home Health Care, Jolivet Auto Repair Shop, National Urban Construction Company, Lede's Insurance Company, Uptown Beauty and Barbershop, Papa John's Pizza, PB Grocery, Loretta's Place Beauty Shop, Prairie View Credit Union, Subway Sandwich Shop, Blue Baker's Barbecue, and the Onco Gas Station. Coming together as one, the city of Prairie View, located right in the heart of Waller County, Texas. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we get ready to start this bottom half of the fifth inning. Four dogs are going to be sitting up Fisher, Prince, and Milky in this bottom half of the fifth inning. Fire still the starting pitcher for Doug Rush and the Cougars. First pitch, breaking ball, finds the strike zone. Not to the liking of Mr. Fisher. Fisher's credit for an assist on tonight. There's another breaking ball and another strike is called. Fisher not expecting that breaking ball. A little loosey-goosey in the box. Quickly 0-2 now as Meyer will come. Swinging and missing as Meyer, the catcher, Hinosa, throws that out. And he was not able to get the base hit. So Prince will come to the plate. Even though that was a strikeout, the runner will get the base on the E2, the pass ball. So Prince, who 0 for 1, he struck out his first at bat. Get a chance to face as it takes a ball upstairs. 1 and 0 is the count to the Bulldogs' second baseman. So reaching off a strikeout was Fisher. He's at first base. Prince will see if he can at least get him over another 90 feet. Meyer checks. There is a swing and a miss. Prince has an even count, one ball and one strike. 
21 is the count. Nobody out here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Cougars up 4-0 over the Bulldogs. Meyer checks, delivers, serves the ball, hit towards center field, and making the grab will be Mr. Herman. France will be out number one. So Milky will now come to the plate. Milky struck out his first at bat. So Meyer expires. Throw the breaking ball that misses outside. One ball and a no strike. Bottom half of the fifth inning. Two hits for the Bulldogs. No run. The pitch off it up. There's a ball hit. Toward the right side, it's going to be a four-six base, not in time for the four-six-three. So that will take care of so Fisher and reaching on the field of choice will be Milky and brings up Landon Lazy now. Lazy got a two-out single his last at bat back in the third inning. It will now come. See what's going on. Coach Doug Rush will now come out and talk with his guy, Mr. Meyer, and that is going to be it for Meyer. Meyer is going to be done for the evening. We'll have a new picture. Once he gets in, we'll tell you all about it. You listen to the Open Mic Broadcast Network. He's fully fit. You have to be physically fit. You also have to be mentally I wish that more warriors would realize how important it is that you get the psychological support that you need so that you can focus on the rest of your life. I think it takes strength in order to admit that you have an issue, but it also takes intuitiveness of a friend, a leader, a supervisor to pick up on the signal that the soldier is having issues and needs to seek professional help in dealing with it. It's also important for the lowest possible levels of leadership to be very supportive in helping their members get the help that they need. When I went to get help, I had more help than I could ask for from my entire command. It's sometimes challenging to come to a senior staff member or senior officer in the unit with a problem. There's not a commanding officer out there or a leadership staff out there that doesn't want to help. So don't hesitate. Come ask. Learn more by visiting www.realwarriors.net or calling 1-866-966-1020. I have PTSD. Once I was back from Iraq, I was distant from everybody in my family. We had a reunion of our unit, and you hear these spouses say, is your husband doing that? My husband's doing that, too. I thought it was just us. And really understanding that, hey, this is a common experience. I learned more to listen to what he was saying, and that made it easier for me to understand where his pain was coming from. Resources are available for military families. Learn more at realwarriors.net. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we have the new pitcher for the Tumball Cougars will be number two, Casey Ryan. Casey Ryan coming in, relief for Mr. Noah Meyer. Noah Meyer, on the record, went four and two-thirds of an inning. So he'll come in now as the Bulldogs. We'll have coming the leadoff, Mr. Randon Levy at first base for the Bulldogs is Eric Milky. So Ryan's first pitch will be foul straight back, strike one. 0 and 1 is the count. 4 0 is our score here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Bulldogs are trailing. The thumb ball. Milky at first base. The pitch to Landon. That ball is going to be blooper toward right field, but handled by Bowman to retire the Bulldogs here in the fifth inning. So that will end up being for the Bulldogs 
No runs, off of no hits, one error, and one runner left on base. We are going to the top of the six. The Cougars, four. And the Bulldogs, zero. You're listening to the Open Mic Broadcast Network. In a moment, cancer changed our lives forever. We were told nothing could be done to enjoy these final moments together. But in that moment, when all seemed lost, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital gave us hope. Because at this moment, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital is saving lives with pioneering research and care. We're changing the way the world treats child cancer by sharing our discoveries with doctors and scientists everywhere. And we'll never have to pay St. Jude for anything ever. At this moment, she wants to be in her own bed. I want to be back at school with my friends. I want to be outside playing. Please take a moment and join St. Jude in finding cures and saving children. Visit stjude.org. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we get ready to start this top half of the sixth inning. we got a couple of changes going up. Kondo is now in right field. As White moves to left field, and Fisher will now be the pitcher on the mound for the Bulldogs. Four runs off of one hit, one error for the Cougars. No runs, two hits for the Bulldogs. Cougars up 4 0. Ryan will now lead off this inning. Ryan. Now on the mound for the Cougars. So Fisher, as well, the new pitcher. He's the third pitcher for the Bulldogs in this contest. First pitch coming up from Fisher will be a ball in the dirt. One ball, no strikes. One and another count. Four zero is our score here in the top half of the sixth inning. Only scheduled for seven innings in the high school. So the Bulldogs got to make some things happen pretty quick. Yeah. 1-0 pitch, another ball missing. 2-0 is the count. So you have White and left, open in center, and you have Fukundo in right field. Fisher on the mound. He comes in from left field. He delivers. There's a strike call. 2-1 is the count. Bulldogs. Only muffed up two hits so far this evening. The 2 1 pitch, there's a ball hit on the right side. It will go foul. BMT is a count. 2 and 2 is a count. 4 and nothing is our score. Fisher ready to deliver the 2 2 pitch. To Ryan, there's a ball hit straight up on the right side, and it's going to be out of play. Now we'll hold even at two balls and two strikes. Bulldogs are next to be in action on Friday. Right, they're going out to Huntsville. So I was going to say we'll be right there. We'll find out. Three and two now. <laughs> Huntsville. Ice Lid during his way. Fisher now with the payoff pitch to Ryan. He checks, kicks, fires. There's a ball fouled off again. And still hold it three and two. Nobody out here in the top half of the sixth inning. Bulldogs down to six outs to try to make up four runs. Fisher ready to go back to work. He sets, kicks, fires. There's a ball. Another one fouled back, and the battle shall continue. Four zero. 
zero is our score. As Fisher for the payoff hits, he set, kicks, fires. There's a swing and a miss, and down goes Ryan. First strikeout for Fisher. That's going to bring up the catcher, Hinosa. Right out here in the top half of the sixth inning. Number six, catcher to back, Hinosa. So Hinosa has got a single, slide to center. He got at least two for three on the evening. He fouls that one straight back. Strike one. Two for three on the day. Four dogs down. Four zero. Fisher coming in relief. He's the third pitcher count for the Bulldogs. There's another strike getting in there. Quickly up 0 and 2. Cody Morgan started off. Jared Fato comes in for a little relief. And now we have Mr. Fisher. The 0 2 pitch. Upstairs, one ball, two strikes. One and two is the count. Last count we had the Lady Bulldogs losing 2 0 with their score update. That's playing against Magnolia, if I'm not mistaken. One, two pitch. That one bounces in the dirt. Two, two is the count. Fisher checks in with Geigley, ready to make the 2-2 delivery. Set, digs, fires. There's a ball hit toward the right side. And making the catch in foul territory will be Mr. Fukundo. That's out number two. As it will bring up. First baseman Marsh. Marsh fly to center on his first at bat, got a single and walk. So he is one for two. Bulldogs, Lady Bulldogs losing six to zero. Because that is a ball offered up to Marshall. Guys over here losing four zero. Who can get at least one run first tonight? Fisher, with the 1-0 delivery. There's a big swing and a miss by Marshall. I mean, Marshall was opened up all the way on that one. Fisher, ready to go back to work. That one misses outside. Two balls and one strike. Two and one is the count. 4-0 is our score in the top of the sixth inning. Bulldogs trailing. How to score 4 0. Fisher, the third pitcher on record for the Bulldogs. There's a ball hit high on the infield. Lazy and in foul territory, battling with it and makes the grab. As that will take care of the Cougars. There were no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We are going to the bottom of the sixth inning. The Cougars on top by the score of 4 0. Listen to the Open Mic Broadcast Network. I'm Elena. I have a master's degree in giving hope to children in Ethiopia. I'm John. My farm experience helps villagers in the Philippines feed themselves. I'm Nanaya. I have a degree in making an impact for generations to come. If you have a degree in agriculture, the environment, or teaching English, you actually have a degree in doing more than you ever thought possible. Peace Corps volunteers can truly make a difference in the lives of people all over the world. With your skills and education, you could help create an irrigation system for a small village in Paraguay, or share new teaching methods to educators in Moldova. The experiences you'll gain in the Peace Corps will stay with you forever. This is your chance to make a real difference, a difference only you can make. Explore how the Peace Corps can fit into your future. Visit PeaceCorps.gov. My resume. My resume. My resume now includes changing lives. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Mike Prince here with you as we get ready to start this bottom half of the sixth inning. Bulldogs have got 
to find a way to get at least a couple of hits going on here. As Ryan is the pitcher relief in for Coach Doug Rush and the Cougars, Corbin Vine will be leading off this sixth inning. Vine is 0 for 2, fly to right field his last at bat and grounded out to second base on his first at bat. So he's 0 for 2 for the day. Ryan ready to deliver. There's a ball turned on. Oh, that ball gets through the left side. And just when I said he was 0 4, he gets his first hit and the third hit for the Bulldogs on the evening. So Jay Bartlett will now come to the plate. I might as well bring it up for Bartlett. Bartlett for the day. He did get a double. He got caught down in the rundown, and he was called out on strike. So he's one for two. Bartlett and the Bulldogs trying to put a few hits together. There's a strike call. One and oh. Oh, and one, I'm sorry, is the count. Bottom half of the sixth inning, Bulldogs trailing by the score of four to zero. Another breaking ball, that one falls in. Strike two. Oh, and two is the count. And the pitch offered up. There's a ball hit right back up the middle. Everybody's going to be safe. All right. Base hit off the glove of the pitcher, and everybody will advance. They're going to say he did get him. Okay, I thought he was going to be safe, so that's going to go 4-3 for the out. It's going to bring up Mr. Wes Digley. Digley, batting from the right-hand side. He slide out the right field, his last at bat. The pitch off it up to Digley. It was a strike call. 0-1 is the count. One out, runner at second base, Bulldogs trailing 4 0. That's a ball inside. One ball, one strike. Bulldogs got five outs to try to make up four runs right now, and it all starts right about now. Ryan checks in, fires, and that's a ball sweeping outside. Two balls and one strike. Two and one is the count. 4-0 is our score. Guidely, they affectionately call him Woo. Takes a few dry cuts on the outside of the plate. Now he's ready to go back to work in the box. Ryan checking the runner at second. The pitch is a strike call and a snap throw down to second base. And the runner is safe. Two balls and two strikes. The runner at second base will be Mr. Corbin Vine. Ryan checks in with a nose to the catcher. The pitch. Strike three is the call. And down goes Godley. Godley called out on strikes. And it's going to bring up Cole Poulton. Poulton reached on the field of choice his last at bat on the double play attempt. He's 0 for 2. Found out the first, but the Pitcher is first at bat. He will take ball one, sweep it on the outside. One and north to count. Runner Corbin Vine at second base. Got a single. Trying to see if they can drive him in here. Bulldogs trailing 4 0 in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Sixth inning. There's a strike call. One ball. And one strike. One and one is the count. Four zero is our score. 
Ryan is the pitcher in relief for the Cougars. That ball missing outside. Two and one. On deck will be Marches. Two one delivery in route. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Bulldogs have been having trouble picking that ball up the last couple of games. So now you got a 2 2 count. Two outs, runner at second base. Deuce is running wild for the Bulldogs. Ryan checks in with Hinosa. He kicks, fires. Oh, wow. And there's a strike call down for the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs end up with no runs off of one hit. No errors and one runner left on base. We are going to the top of the seventh. Bulldogs trail by the score of four. Zero. You're listening to the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Like any parent, I worry about the health of our nation's children. Never before have so many American kids been put in heart disease and other serious health problems. The good news is that the right foods can help our kids stay healthy. As they grow, I keep all time. Free from the past of delicious recipes and nutrition tips. Call 1-877-665-KIDS or visit www.kidsgethealthy.org. PCRM is a non Doctors and laypersons are working together to promote preventive medicine, especially good nutrition, and more ethical research. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are at the top of the seventh inning. I'm Dr. Mike Prince. You are listening to live Bulldog baseball coverage right here on the Open Mike Broadcast Network. As the Bulldogs have been stymied to three hits, ten hits for the Cougars. Four runs off of ten hits, one error committed by the Cougars. No runs off of three hits, no errors committed by the Bulldogs. You'll have to lead off this seventh inning. Scheduled to lead off will be Bowman, Skyvington, and Colonel. Well, we got a pinch hitter now here as it will be this Dusky, number 11, batting for Herman here in this inning here. First pitch he takes is a ball. Fisher still on the mound for Coach Lazy. 1-0 pitch. There's a strike. One ball and one strike. 1-1 one one is the count. Here in the top of the seventh inning, Cougars on top, 4-0. Fisher, the third pitcher for the Bulldogs, coming in. There's a ball from the foul tip off the bat. It looked like it was going to hit him, but it hits the handle of the bat. So the count will go to one ball and two strikes. Fisher says, I'll take it any way I can get it. Fisher ready to go back to work now with the one-two pitch. There's a ball tap toward the left side. And Fisher with a nice play for the 1-3 put out. He reached all the way up to the third base side to retire the pinch hitter. The pinch hitter number 11. We don't have a number 11 on our roster here for these guys. But nonetheless, he's out. So... Brandon Walters. So Brandon Walters will now be the batter for the Cougars. He'll take ball one. A lot of guys get a chance to bat at this time of the game with a 4 nothing lead here in the seventh inning. As a ball. As a count, it'll be 1-0. and 
This is ready to go back to work. The 1 0 delivery. That is a strike call. This is hitting the spots right now. One ball, one strike, one out here in the top of the seventh inning. Bulldog trailing 4 0 at the time. This is ready to go back to work. There's a ball. Looks like he was going to pull the trigger on that one. Two balls and one strike. Is you ready to go back to work pitching from the windup as he will come. There's the third ball, and that's going to be ball four. It's going to be a free pass off it up to the pinch hitter, number 21, Brandon Walters. So Walters has the wall. Now you have Perry. He'll be back down into the sky Here he comes in, batting from the right-hand side. That's the pitch from Fisher. There's a ball hit softly. And they're going to get the out for the 6-4. Try to get the 6-4-3. As to get the lead runner and reaching on the field of choice. Step kick will now come to the plate. He'll be batting for Perum. Get that from the right hand side. Old Prince was able to hold on to that one. Got taken out for the double play attempt. Held on. Two outs here in the top half of the seventh inning. Fisher. Ready to go back to work now. He checks. He fires. That's the ball upstairs. Want to know us to count? Want to know us to count? Four nothing is our score here in this top half of the seventh inning. Four dogs will have three more outs to try at least tie it up, if not win the whole thing. That's the ball upstairs. Two and zero. Oh. Two and zero is the count. Four zero is our score. Fisher, third pitcher on the contest for the Bulldogs. That's a breaking ball that misses. Three and zero is the count. Fisher, walking around, talking to himself a little bit. Holds up on the rubber. He's ready to go back to work. Runner at first base with two outs. Takes it, delivers, strike is called. Three and one is the count. Bulldogs 0 and 2 in district play, 5 6 and 1 on the young season. Cougars 12 and 5 on the season and 1 and 1 in district play. Bulldogs. I have to try to shake some sticks. Bottom half for the seventh inning. This should check the runner back over at first. Now ready to go to work. There's a ball hit. Foul down the right side. We got ourselves a full count, ladies and gentlemen. So the runner will be leaving first base with the pitch. See if old Fisher can come through here. Fisher back on the mound. Checks in with Godley. Checks over at the runner at first base. He now delivers. There's a the ball poked toward the right side. Foul. And the count will hold it full. Beautiful night out here for some baseball, man. Nice little spring breeze. It is officially springtime. Guys are working things out. The payoff pitch coming. Oh, yeah, that's a strikeout. Called him out looking. Fisher with a nice breaking ball to take care of the Cougars, Mr. Skepton. He's been called out on strikes. There were no runs off of no hit, no errors, and one runner left on base. We're going to the bottom of the seventh. Time to get your rally caps. Bulldogs trail. 
4-0. More than 2 million Americans have served in Iraq and Afghanistan, and the Department of Veterans Affairs reports that approximately 11 to 20 percent of those warriors may have experienced symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. As we recognize PTSD Awareness Month, Real Warriors campaign volunteer Meg Mitchum, a former Army combat medic who served in Iraq, encourages fellow warriors to reach out when they need help. The hardest step was admitting that I needed help coping with PTSD. Once I did, my command and unit fully supported me, and I was able to get the care I needed. Getting support helped me succeed in the military and now in my civilian career. If you or a loved one is coping with an invisible wound, resources are available and they work. For more information, visit the Real Warriors campaign at realwarriors.net or call 866-966-1020. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is crunch time now for the old Bulldogs as we get ready to go for this bottom half of the seventh inning Bulldogs trailing by the score of 4-0. Scheduled up will be Marches, Fisher, Prince, and Milky. That's right, Facundo will come in for Marches. He has make that change. So Facundo batting from the left-hand side. He get ready for his first at bat on the evening. Facing off against Ryan, who's come in relief here in the fifth inning. Facundo will take ball one. Bulldogs got to start with that one, string some things together. 1-0 pitch, that ball. Big cut by Facundo. He fouls that one straight back. One ball, one strike. Fisher is on deck for the Bulldogs. 1-1 pitch. There's a ball. Hit toward the left side, and it's going to be a 6 3 Put out to handle Facundo. We got one out. Will be Mr. Curtis Fisher. Fisher comes in on the evening. Struck out and reached on an error by the catcher. Drives that one to the left side. A dive and play at shortstop. And a base hit. Good, good attempt by the shortstop. So that will be hit number four for the Bulldogs. It's now Philip Prince will come up. He's 0 for 2. He struck out and slide out the center field. Prince coming in. Facing off. There's a ball. Hit toward the right side, and Prince gets back-to-back hits for the Bulldogs. Drives that one to right field. Now runners at first and second with one out. As they're back to Mr. Skyler White. White will be batting for Lazy. One out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. There's a ball. One ball and no strikes. Bulldogs trying to put a little rally together here in the bottom half of the seventh inning, trailing 4-0. One out, runners at first and second. There's a ball. Hits four at the right side. And that's going to be a foul ball. (laughs) Oh, well, I thought we had some excitement growing up over here. Ball trickled just a few inches foul on the right side. And you got pretty decent speed on the base play at that second base for the Bulldogs. Will be Fisher. And then you have Prince at first base. So now the 1 1 count. There's the ball turned on. It's going to get through safe. Infield single. <laughs> and the Bulldogs have got the bases loaded with one out here in this second inning.
So now, Daisy will come to the plate. Bases are loaded. And we got a meeting on the mound with Coach Rush telling his guys to settle down. Meanwhile, the Bulldogs have got six hits, and they've got three of those hits in this inning. Go figure that one out. So base is loaded. Bulldogs trailing 4-0. Navy fouls that one back. It's 0-1. 0-1 is the count. 4-0 is our score. Yes, when you thought the guys were dead men walking, they have brought a little life back to the situation. There's a ball hit toward the right side. Got through, and that's going to bring in a run. They're going to send Prince in, and he will score. Two runs have come in, and the Bulldogs are rallying here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Two more runs will come in. Corbin Vines will now come. Still only one out. That's going to be a two RBIs for Mr. Levy. So Vine, he singled his last at that. The runners at first and second right now. The Bulldogs trying to threaten here. As the ball gets away, one ball. Meanwhile, there is a little bullpen activity going on for the Cougars here. Bulldogs trying to get their first district win of the season. Trailing 4-2 to two now. That's the ball downstairs. So the Bulldogs have waited to their final break to get their runs across. And they still got some work to do. The pitch coming from Ryan. That's a ball outside, and it's 3-0. and 3-0 and to Vines. On deck will be Bartlett. Ryan with runners at first and second. One out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. The 3-0 pitch off it up. That's ball four, and we got bases loaded again. Lazy. Got the base hit. Now you have the walk worked by Vines. Bases are now loaded. And that is going to do it for Ryan. We got a new pitcher coming in. We'll tell you all about it when we return. It is heating up now here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Bulldogs trailing four to two. One out with bases loaded. We'll be right back. You listen to the open mic. Broadcast Network. You're listening to the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the official voice of Walla County Athletics, serving the community through faith and athletics. We're taking a break right now in our live sports coverage, but stay tuned. We'll be right back with more action right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We got a new picture. We'll get his name and the information. He's wearing number 10. We don't have a number 10 listed. The situation is this. Bases are loaded. He is a Kent Kakovi type sidewinder pitcher. As the first pitch will be a ball offered up. Trevor Crash is the pitcher. As it is a 1 0 count, there's a ball tap foul. And the count will be even at one ball and one strike. At the plate for the Bulldogs will be Mr. Bartlett. One ball. One strike, one out, base is loaded in the bottom of the seventh inning. There's a big swing and a miss. Bartlett misses that one, and it's one ball and two strikes. Sidewinder, it's hard for the right-handed pitchers to pick that ball up because that ball stays hit a lot. So he's got his hand dragging on the dirt right now, crouched over. Now he's bent over and steals side. There's a ball fisted toward the left side. Oh, they're going to hit the force out at third, but a run will come in 
So that would be a fielder's choice. The runner scores from third to make it 4-3. They're going to put five unassisted to get Levy out. So now with two outs, runners at first and second, Wes Geigley, one hit could tie this thing up. We got two outs as Trevor Crush, Crash, I'm sorry, is the pitcher. The sidewinder delivers, and there is a strike call. Two outs, runners at first and second, the time run at second base. A base hit, and we're going to have some drama at the plate. Godly is who you want up here at this time if you're the Bulldogs. As they check the runner back at second, Vine trying to get a big enough lead. He represents the time run here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Crash checks in with Hinosa, his pitcher, his catcher, and delivers. There's a big swing and a miss. The runner going to save. And is out. Vines is out at third base, caught stealing. And that is how this game will end. Vines broke the third, and he's caught stealing at third. So he'll be 2 3, 2 5, I'm sorry, to end this contest. And the Bulldogs lose a tough one. Four to three. We're going to take us a break, and we'll be right back with the closing thoughts and comments of today's contest. You're listening to the Open Mind Broadcast Network, the official voice of Walla County Athletics, serving the community through faith and athletics. We're taking a break right now in our live sports coverage. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with more action right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Mike Prince here with you as we give you our final tally here. The Bulldogs lose a heartbreaker. Four to three was the score of tonight's contest. The Bulldogs get all three of their runs in the bottom half of the seventh inning, ending up with three runs off of six hits, and a total, if I'm not mistaken, let's see if we get a total of how many runners they left on base here. That's one, two, three, four, five. They have a total of five runners left on base throughout the course of the game. And the Cougars end up with four runs off of ten hits. And the Cougars had a total of runners left on the bag. It was one, two, three, five. Seven, eight runners left on base for the Cougars. So the Cougars go to two and one in district play. The Bulldogs drop to zero and three in district play. What a tough game that was. End up with the loss for the Bulldogs on that one would end up being Fisher. Well, actually, Plata. Plata ends up with the loss on that, and the winner for the Cougars would end up being Mr. Noah Myers. So the Bulldogs end up with three runs, six hits, with no errors, six runners left on base, and the Cougars end up with four runs, ten hits, one error, and eight runners left on base. That is going to take care of our broadcast for tonight. I want to thank you so much for joining us. Remember, the Bulldogs will be back in action on Friday night. You can listen exclusively right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. First pitch will be at 7 p.m. They take on the Huntsville Hornets. We'll pack a lunch and travel on out to Huntsville to give you that broadcast coverage. Until the next time, be blessed. We'll see you on the other side. Good night.